Okay, guys. Um, uh, the last thing we're going to talk about pretty much is she was, uh, your instructor was talking about using um, different ways or different techniques and how to present. And it seems like right now you don't really have a good way to record video. I don't know how you're doing it now, but I showed her this thing called Open Broadcast Software. It's something that you would see on a lot of streaming sites, uh, PewDiePie, anyone on uh, Twitch, anyone that does a screen recording, video games, things like that. They pretty much use a system similar or either uh, the program itself called OBS or otherwise known as the Open Broadcast Software. Um, I'm using an older version right now, so I'm going to pull that onto the screen. Now we got to be careful because you're going to get a really trippy infinity shot there. Uh, so it just gets really crazy really fast. So you do have to be kind of careful about that. So I'm going to pull this back to the other side there so it doesn't trip anyone out. If you, yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. Anyways, um, the reason why us and a lot of people really like it, especially share your art and gaming to the entertainment with the world that's exactly what it is it is a free software that works with windows and mac and i really don't know people that are cool enough to run anything on linux or linux i don't know how they're supposed to say that has a lot of features down here but the big thing is is that it's free and it's great for students um so i'm just going to go ahead and click on download and choose your version so if you're on a Mac use a Mac if you're on Windows use Windows uh, they have a classic version which is actually what you just saw there that I pulled up on the screen I'm gonna do it again whoa that got weird again anyways so in this case here I'm using Windows 10 so I'm gonna click on Windows 7 and up I'm gonna let that download it looks like it's about 94 megs which is fine okay so I'm gonna go ahead it looks like the download finished I'm gonna click on that to start the installation should pop up on my screen. Should be very similar to a Mac, um, but I don't have time to do the Mac version as well. You're just going to have to live with the Windows tutorial. So I'm going to click on Next, Agree, and most of the time you just hit Next, but in my case I'm going to do an F because I have an F drive. But uh, most of the time you just leave it alone. Don't touch it, but I have some special stuff on my computer and I want to keep it that way. And I just keep hitting next until it starts doing this weird fancy extract thing. Yeah. Sometimes they get bored to click on this button. You can't really ruin it. Just kind of wait. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run OBS. It's going to be kind of weird. I don't know if I'm going to be able to run two of them at one time. But let's see if I can. Yeah, looks like I might be able to. Yeah, I'm going to hit OK on the license agreement. You should read those. But um, sometimes it gets kind of strange. Anyways, we don't need this website anymore. Close that out. Uh, now I have an icon here. It looks like this really cool ninja star. So you might cut yourself if you're not careful. But this is what the interface is going to look like. Um, I'm glad I'm able to run two of them because it'd be really trippy. Because you'd have to be looking at this every time. Oh, God. Anyways, going back. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you want to set up a source. So inside of OBS, and we're going to go over the very super basics that you need to do your job. Under Sources, click the plus. And here, you're going to want to do just a, I want to say you're going to do a display capture. So display is your monitor. So for me, it's this whole area right here that we're kind of recording. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to call this monitor one because I have more than one monitor and depending on what happens I might want to record what's happening on the other monitor. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and see it's going ahead and doing that for me. But it's giving me a preview here of what it's going to record or where it's going to record. So I'm going to hit OK. So as you can see right now I'm already getting that crazy infinity shot but that's fine. So under Settings down here in the bottom right hand side, or you can do tool, or I'm sorry, not tools, uh, file, then settings. You're going to see this window here. Um, you only have to make a couple of small changes before you can actually record. So over here, I'm going to do output, 
And I'm going to keep this all simple because, again, you want to keep this as simple as possible. Um, I'm going to change my recording path to a place that I know I can get to. And I always place it to a place where I'm going to stumble upon by accident. So for me, as you should know by now, currently that is my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and record everything to my desktop. I'm going to leave this the same as the stream. Um, there are different ways to get different types of qualities out of that, but I'm going to leave that up to you uh, as a student to make those decisions. Uh, so that means if you want to get more quality out of this, you're going to have to do your own homework. Um, but most of the time, for my purposes, for your purposes, just leave it alone. This is going to be fine. Now what you want to do is change the recording format. Because right now, it, the FLV is like a special format that I don't think anybody's truly used in probably about 15 years. I haven't really used it since like 2007. So 15 years was a tad bit of an exaggeration. But anyway, swap it down over here to MIMP4. And just kind of leave that alone. Um, and then when you ever you record a video, like the one I'm recording right now, it's just going to put the date on there. So... When you get a chance, you might want to make those changes. Um, here, yep, everything looked pretty good. So I'm just going to leave those things alone. Yep. And hit apply. Okay. So that's great. And right now, I have this OBS recorder. And um, as you see here, I have a microphone hooked into it, which is one of the reasons why my audio is just a tad bit better. Now, it's not a great microphone, but it's enough to where... I don't sound like I'm outside and the wind's blowing into it and you can't understand every other word I'm hearing. We want this to be as clear as possible because when you're narrating your scene, people are going to want to uh, understand what it is that you're saying, especially if you're trying to show it off to somebody else. Um, so when you are ready to record your video, just come over here to the far right and there's a start recording. Do not confuse that with start streaming. That won't work. We didn't set it up. So even if you click on it, you can't break it. It's just going to kind of weird out a little bit. Um, actually, I don't think anything's going to happen. Yeah, see, it's going to tell me that we don't even have a spot for a stream. That's fine. But when you're ready to record, just click start recording. And as you see here, again, like this file popped up. That's the new one. Um, and we'll and just give the name or the, the date and the time. When I'm ready to stop, I hit stop. And as you can see now, I should have a fully fleshed out video here. And if I play that, it's going to get really quick. Start recording. For a and as you see here, again, like this file popped up. That's the new one. So that was just a video um, playing. I'm going to stop that. But it, a recording a video is just that simple. Um, so I'm going to show you what I would use it for. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't need that. And I'm going to go ahead and close this out to save on processing power. So what I have here is a Unity scene. Um, it's kind of trippy, and I and it's I downloaded it from the Unity Asset Store, and it's just a corridor lighting example because it's made to show off all the new cameras, the lightings, all the special stuff that you have. I was working on my own, and uh, I got just extremely lazy and quit caring. So the the setting that I was working on was a little bit more realistic for interior designers. Uh, so the, because this one's really kind of futuristic. But at the same time, it kind of shows off the power of Unity and the reason why a lot of people are moving to it for their arc, arc viz and why this is starting to become a industry phenomenon. And even if you don't use Unity, they have this thing called Unreal Engine, which is a different type of video game engine close to Unity, but it has a different um, setup. So anyways, I have everything set up here. And what I would normally do is I would just hit play, walk through it, and talk a little bit about my scenes. So in this case here, if I hit play, or actually I'm going to go to game mode, I'm going to turn off stats, and then I'm going to hit maximize on play. So that way it's going to fill up my whole screen. And so whenever I walk through these areas, and I'm going to talk about that really shady, crazy Lab 05 metal door, uh, you're not distracted by anything. So hit play. And here I am in the scene. Uh, you can see here, if I walk around, I have a couple of bouncing balls that are doing realistic real-time shadows and really kind of crazy types of caustics. Um, we chose Lab 05 because it's really pretty and that's the number. I really like the Burst Stone of 5. I think it's a Maystone and I think that's orange. That's a lie. I don't believe that. 
So what we can do is we can follow us over to the right corridor, and we can notice that it's just dark and ominous and kind of scary. The further away I get from lights, the more scared I get, and the more dangerous I become. Uh, <laughs> we can go over to the other side of the corridor and take a look at that. And inside of here, same thing, really dark, scary. Got some clouds coming up. But that's the tour of my corridor, guys. And uh, thank you for joining us. So that's how simple this setup is. As I turn off play and I hit record again, I'll actually have a different set of videos to work with. So those are the things that you can use OBS to show off your new projects. You don't even actually have to have Unity. You can actually walk them through a different type of process, record a video, or if you have a problem inside of say Revit that you can't explain to your instructor, just pull up OBS, walk them, walk through the process until it breaks, and now you have a video to where you can show them what you did instead of having to explain it. Just a lot of things you can do this or do with this. Alright, thanks.